I think what led me into this field was uh, two things principally. One was growing up in rural Minnesota and having all of the geomorphic handiwork of the Great Ice Age right outside my back door. Um, the lakes, the erratic boulders, the, the kettle ponds, the, uh, the drumlins, all of these things were part of the landscape I grew up in. Um, early on, my father told me stories about the Great Ice Age and the fact that um, the area in which we had lived had been under a great ice sheet many thousands of years ago, which I found extremely intriguing. So growing up in that particular landscape um, certainly instigated an interest in the forces that had created the landscape. As I got older and began to pursue reading interests, I discovered a love of ancient mythology. By the time I got into junior high school, I had read quite deeply into uh, Greek and Roman mythology, Norse mythology, and some American Indian mythology. Much of mythology is concerned with events that could be characterized as catastrophic in nature, dealing with great floods and fires and destructions. A pivotal point for me was in the summer of 1970 when I spent most of the summer hiking and traveling the western states, which includes Colorado and Utah, Oregon, Washington, Idaho. And it was that summer that I first traveled up the Columbia River Gorge and was quite impressed with the spectacular landscapes in the gorge. I traveled across the northern Scablands and didn't, of course, have a clue as to what I was seeing and what it meant, having never heard of the Channel Scablands or the Missoula Flood. But nonetheless, I was very fascinated. I think it was later on, probably from the mid to the late 70s, where I became actively interested in understanding from a scientific point of view what, um, what was the explanation behind some of these geological features that I had been observing. In the late 70s, I met an author who was writing a book about pole shifts. And one of his principal sources of information was an author um, who wrote a book called Path of the Pole. And in that book, he documented a lot of anomalous geological evidence for great catastrophes in Earth history. I read that book and made it an objective of mine to track down as many of the references in that book as I possibly could. And there were well over 300 of them. So I spent over a period of a couple of years my spare time reading several hundred articles, um, scientific articles dealing with catastrophic geological events, mass extinctions, and so forth. I was quite electrified in the 1980 when um, several articles appeared in the scientific press, all um, presenting the idea that the extinction of the dinosaurs had been triggered by the impact of something from space. For many years growing up, dinosaurs was a fascination of mine. And I read every book I could find on the dinosaurs, watched every movie that would have had dinosaurs in it. One of the prevalent themes of a lot of the books that I read was what caused the demise of the dinosaurs. And that was an idea that sort of lodged in the back of my mind. So when the uh, articles came out in 1980 about the demise of the dinosaurs, particularly the article by Walter Alvarez and his colleagues um, suggesting that an asteroid had struck the Earth, I found that idea quite exciting. And that rekindled an interest of mine in the cosmic environment. I had also been interested in astronomy as a youth and spent uh, many happy hours going to observatories and planetariums, museums. I had no particular interest in comets or asteroids per se at that time. But once I realized that there was scientific, credible scientific information that the Earth had perhaps been struck by a great asteroid causing widespread destruction leading to the demise of the dinosaurs. I became very interested in that and began pursuing studies about our planetary environment, trying to understand the nature of the asteroid belt, 
um, the source of comets and so forth. And as the 80s proceeded, of course, there was a lot of growing interest in this subject of the interactions between Earth and the cosmic environment. I followed all of this research as much as I possibly could. As it progressed, I began to get more and more interested in uh, what would be the consequences to such events, not only to the realm of biological life on Earth, but if such events had played a role in human history. My interest in this matter of catastrophes in Earth history, nonlinear events, events that interrupt the normal course of things, just continued to accelerate through the 80s and the 90s. Uh, in the 90s, I began with some colleagues of mine to undertake field exploration into some of the great uh, events. Uh, we began to focus on events in the Pacific Northwest regarding some of the largest floods ever documented in the history of the Earth, primarily uh, the Missoula Flood and the Bonneville Flood, as they're called. We have made numerous expeditions to those regions to try to decipher the stratigraphic and sedimentary and erosional evidence that's preserved in those landscapes of Washington State, Idaho, Montana, Oregon, Utah, and so on. This is kind of in a nutshell how I got into this subject. I think it's going to prove to be extremely important as time goes on, particularly the understanding of catastrophism in the context of human history. Because we'll notice that if we look at the trend of research, we see that initially the focus was on the influence of catastrophic events on life, on biology of, of the planet as a whole. And it wasn't until the mid-90s and even going into the turn of the 21st century that a focus began to shift and a realization began to occur to researchers that in the time that human beings have been around on the planet, we have had multiple ice ages come and gone. We've had multiple impacts of things from space. We've had enormous volcanic eruptions, all kinds of things that were they to recur again today would have profound consequences for the stability of our own civilization. 